Hey everybody, welcome to On Hand Art. My name is Brett, it is great to see you. They recently replaced the roof on my house, but I got the weather vane out of the deal. So let's take this palette and make a new house for them. Okay, I admit it, one of the reasons I wanted the house we live in is this weather vane. Now, sure, it was lower on the list, but it was still on the list. And now that I have it, I want it and the patina of its 50 plus years to be the focus of this piece. That's why I'm not going to do anything to it besides adjust its height later. So let's start building our weather vane's new home by making the weighted core that the house will be built around. To do that, I'm salvaging the wood from this pallet. In fact, one good slam should do it. Yep, there we go. And now we can build the core, which will be a 9 inch or about 23 centimeter cube buried inside the house. I'll explain that sizing in a minute, but let's start by cutting the thicker rails down to as many 9 inch long segments as I can get. Now, I'm trying to be good and use a miter box to get nice straight cuts. Oh, I freaking hate hand tools. But I am quickly reminded why I hate hand tools, and I also think this saw is dull. So I switched to my oscillating cutter, using the straight end of a 2x4 to guide my cuts. And that worked well enough for what I need, which are mostly straight cuts. The bottom will average out to a nice flat surface in the end. And then I'll cut off some of this leftover 4x4 fence post as the main support the weather vane's rod will slide into. And then to center it in the outer box, I'm gluing and screwing the 4x4 to this piece of scrap. Eventually, this whole assembly will get glued and screwed to the outer box. And an old woodworker's trick I literally got from an old woodworker is to chamfer or cut on an angle the sides so you get a tighter fit. That way you don't have to worry about getting the sides perfectly flat and you can more easily keep it square because all you have to worry about is this one thin edge. Now with all my pieces cut for the main box, I can start gluing it together. Now woodworkers, you might want to avert your eyes from this. I'm using landscape construction adhesive. Now the great thing about construction adhesive is that it's nice and thick and it holds the rest of the blocks to each other. It doesn't have to be pretty and I'm definitely not going for tight seams or anything like that, only a solid structure. Now originally I wanted the house to be a little smaller. I thought it would be funnier to have this huge weather vane on a tiny little house, but physics is simply not on my side. If you've ever looked at a pedestal table, you'll see that the base is smaller than the top, but the limit is that the base has to be a minimum of a half of the width of the top. And this whole piece kind of acts like one of those pedestal tables. So with the heaviest part of the weather vane being 18 inches wide, I'm going with a nine inch wide base for the house. Now, of course, the horse is a few inches wider, but it surprisingly doesn't weigh much, so I'm hoping that the weight of the base compensates for the extra width. Once the adhesive is set up for the outer box, I'm attaching the main core. And yes, I'm using more construction adhesive. The adhesive is nice and thick, so it's going to fill in any of those gaps and it will set up as hard as a rock. But for a little extra security and to prevent it from moving while it's setting up, I'll screw it to the main box at four points. With that core ready, we can start wrapping it. Now, this will smooth out the surface, but it will also start adding the dimension and shape of the house. I'm wrapping it in a few layers of this archival cardstock we've had around for a few years. I'm also using Mod Podge because it's a durable PVA glue. Now, my main consideration here is to keep the corners crisp as I add layers. Then I let it dry mostly completely. Now, mostly because it's in my cold garage and things aren't drying very well out there, but now it's dry enough to take a cut without ripping, but also easy enough still to fold down at this thickness. Now, these aren't tall enough to use as the front and back of the roof, and I could have cut them off completely, but I was concerned I'd make a noticeably uneven or ragged edge. And I'm going to fix this all when I add the roof anyway. The roof itself starts by layering up sheets of the same cardstock to roof thickness, so whatever that looks like to me. And then while that dries, I'm making the roof supports and the front and back panels from a sheet of basswood. To figure out the size and shape of the roof, I just eyeballed it, measuring off of the house. Then I drew out one side of the triangle, folded the paper over, and cut it out to make it symmetrical. And my oscillating cutter and a wood blade makes quick work of these cutouts. Now these are structural only in that they hold up the roof but they're not gonna hold up the weather vane at all. Still, I'm holding them on with, yep, you guessed it, construction adhesive. And then once those are set up enough, I can remove the tape, cut down the blocks a bit, and then glue those in place for a little added support. My original plan was to add the roof by bending it in shape and then trimming off the excess, but I absentmindedly cut it down first, leaving the lump on one side instead of the middle. So I ended up cutting out two thinner rectangles and then gluing them on with a combination of Mod Podge and construction adhesive. I thought the construction adhesive would keep them from sliding down, but I ended up having to add some staples temporarily to hold everything in place. And then later I added a single sheet center spline to smooth out the corner a bit. 
Now, this looks much better, but it's going to make things more difficult for me in the future. I'll explain that in a couple of minutes. And then I also learned the hard way that because Mod Podge has so much moisture in it, the roof panel's kind of curved up. So I ended up coming back with more construction adhesive and tape to hold them down. Then after a few hours in front of my space heater, it was dry enough to glue on the cloth. I'm using a big scrap of this thin cloth to cover the house. Now, I wanted to add both the subtle cloth texture, but also give the paint something to hold on to. This cardstock has a coating on it that tends to make it hard for the paint to stick. This is also the first time I've ever wrapped an object in cloth, so I'm making this up as I go. So if you have a better idea of how to do this, please leave a comment and share with the rest of us. The only way I could see to do this at the time was to glue on one panel at a time and then trim it up as I go. Then I stretched it over the surface to smooth it down before moving on to the next side. Now the roof went a lot easier because it's just mostly one panel and I could tuck the ends under to hide them. Doing it this way left kind of a ragged scrap behind that I don't know what to do with. And then later I realized I could have just pre-cut the shapes of the house, but in the end with a little cleanup, it worked out pretty well. All it needed at this point was a chimney, so I folded down a square tube of cardstock and measured off the roof for an angle. And of course I used construction adhesive to glue that on. Once that was all dry, I fixed a few things I wasn't happy with and painted it with acrylic. My goal is to end up with the house looking like it was plucked from a painting. Now, if you've ever seen my other work, you'll also recognize this is the home character in my art. But I want to encourage you to follow your own style. For me, this black and white home has a lot of personal meaning. But I also think it allows the viewer to cut through anything that they want to assign to this home and just see it as a representation of a home. With the house painted all white, it's time for the scary part, and that's to drill the hole for the weather vane. Using a box cutter, I cut a notch to make it easier to set the drill bit in place. And I started with a pilot hole using one of my smaller bits. The challenge was keeping it from sliding around because I'm drilling at the edges of both roof panels. But now we can use my half inch bit to make space for the final sized bit. Though I did run into the same issue with drilling at the edges of the roof panels, now we can use the final 3 quarter inch spade bit on an extension to drill through the 4x4 inside the house. Now my minor challenge is that I can't see what's going on in there, so I don't know how far down I'm drilling. The bigger challenge is that I don't really have a way to clear out that hole right now, so I might not get the full depth I want. But while I think through that, let's paint the door and windows on. As I said earlier, I want this to look like it was pulled out of a painting. So I don't want super crisp edges like I would get with painter's tape. I also don't want everything perfectly uniform, so I'm kind of eyeballing measurements. But with all the windows painted on and the door, let's get back to cleaning out that hole I drilled. So now turning the house upside down seemed to get most of it, and then I just used a little rod that I had laying around to kind of clean out the rest of it, and then just turned it upside down one more time, and that kind of did the trick. It is often the simplest solutions that get the job done. With the house ready, I'm trimming down the rod to get the weather vane to the right height. For that, I used my rotary tool with a fiberglass cutoff wheel and a whole lot of patience. The nice thing was that this generated so much heat I didn't need my space heater. It just took 15 minutes and a whole lot of patience on my part, but remember to wear a face mask, goggles, and hearing protection with this. And I'll definitely save that piece for something later. But with the weather vane installed, I can show you the finished piece. Well, I hope you found some inspiration or techniques that you can steal for your own amazing art. And if you did enjoy this video and would like more art and ideas, hit the like button and subscribe. Hitting like helps out the channel, and subscribing is because I just love to have you as part of the on-hand art community. And if you did like this video, I'll leave a link to one that YouTube thinks you'll also like. But thanks for watching, and remember, you are creative.